this could be us So back to what I was saying This could be us In this video, we are going to talk about men's bathroom etiquette. So before starting this video, please like this video and subscribe to our channel for the future updates. Public bathrooms, and specifically men's facilities, aren't what they once were. When you see a Bogart film, you get the impression that public restrooms once served as bulwarks of art deco elegance and decorum with dapper gents handing the attendant a fin for the mints, the aftershave, and the freshly pressed towel. Yes, there are still men's restrooms like that around. The problem is that I never get to ride in them. The airport or, let's say, the neighborhood mall don't have them. No, the majority of the men's restrooms I use are dark, musty, and strangely cold with thin metal stall partitions that are painted a peeling taupe color. You shouldn't dwell too much on the specifics of what is causing the floor to be so sticky because it may or may not be wet. Those public restrooms are a necessary evil. Have you ever noticed that, while being there for our convenience, they are not actually all that convenient? Why should you have to trek all the way back to the food court if you need to use the restroom while you are browsing the gap? I leave off. The objective is that you don't look forward to using the men's room. If you're anything like me, you picture the women's restroom as a tranquil haven with cozy chairs, subdued in direct lighting, and box Brandenburg concertos softly wafting through the air. Why else would they appear to be so eager to travel? And nonetheless in bunches. The mythical ladies' restroom is, in essence, the complete opposite of the men's restroom, which frequently has the ongoing graffiti battle between two obscene, key-wielding teens determined to defame the names of each other's moms as its most appealing feature. Therefore, since no man in his right mind enjoys going to the bathroom, the least we can do is make it as painless as we can for one another. In light of this, I propose these seven straightforward guidelines for restroom etiquette to my fraternal brethren of the public John. If everyone follows them, they should make this necessary evil a bit less unpleasant, maybe even enjoyable, for everyone. They are simple to remember. Here's the description of men's bathroom etiquette. Let's start. Rule number one. The buffer urinal. What could be more awkward than rubbing elbows with a stranger at the urinal while standing with your legs raised to prevent a puddle? Guys, this is fundamental field strategy. This was already covered by Dave Barry. When there is a choice, you never, ever, ever choose the urinal that is right next to one that is already in use. Select the outside urinal if there are three available. Keep the middle one for the person who might genuinely pass away if he doesn't use the restroom. Choose the one on the other end of the bank if the one on the outside is already in use. Wait if only the center one is accessible and both outside ones are in use. Soon, one of the other men will be finished. Rule number two. Announce your presence. It's one thing if you are using a stall and the restroom is empty. But you need to announce your presence as soon as you hear the door open. Do I want you to say hello and introduce yourself? Without a doubt. No way. Instead, cough a little. A smell can be mistaken for the shuffle of a heavy winter jacket or a shopping bag. Additionally, you might not want to breathe via your nose. Just passing along. A cough is more effective, more recognizable, and has the added benefit of being completely impersonal. Keep in mind that your goal is to write anything down, not to make new friends. Rule number three. Ignore my kid. This ought to be self-evident. I shouldn't even need to mention it. But every weekend, in Costco, for example, there is a person who breaks this cardinal rule and feels the need to remark that my kid either or really needs to go or be made it. The second one is very unsettling. 
It seems the man was somehow keeping an eye on my child's transaction, and it is more frightening when paired by a morning sigh. My priority is my children. They shouldn't be in the men's room, in my opinion. Although I'd prefer to use the family bathroom, it always seems to be in use when I really need it. There will be sufficient cause for emotional trauma in my children. They don't require old man winter to remark on their PP. Rule number four no eye contact, no talking. Okay. I've had exactly one intriguing chat in a public restroom with a stranger. It happened in a supermarket. He was an elderly World War II veteran who was awaiting his medications. He started talking to me while I washed my hands, and he appeared a little bewildered and perplexed. But just because there was one instance doesn't mean it's acceptable to interact or gaze directly at another man in the men's room. Nothing is ever okay. Don't be the guy who enters the restroom and tries to start a conversation or remarks that the room smells like Bigfoot's tomb. Even if it were amusing, the circumstance does not warrant humor. If there is ever a severe circumstance that calls for interpersonal connection, eye contact is absolutely forbidden. Like a marine on inspection, keep your body steady while looking forward. Keep your eyes down as you enter and exit. Looking in the mirror while seated at the sink is acceptable, but peering at your neighbor should never be permitted. Ever. Rule number five Clean up after yourself. Pick it up if you spill on the seat. Make a mess with water and soap at the sink, or miss the trash can with a stray paper towel. This is a men's room, not an elementary school. You might be in a rush to leave. And I can appreciate that, but come on, you're an adult. Act as if it drops on the toilet seat or an unflushed toilet will immediately ban you from using that particular facility for at least 10 hours. Show some respect. While you're at it, wipe the push bar after ripping off some paper towel, then begin rolling it out so the next man can rip a piece right away. The next time I try to acquire some paper towels and accidentally touch a weird gelatinous coating on the convenient push bar, why should I have to put up with your laziness? That's how you should depart from the location tidy and dry. Leave no trace is a motto that backpackers often repeat to themselves. Remove any traces. What do you think of our video? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoy this video and want to hear from me again, be sure to hit that subscribe button before you go. Thanks for watching.